Okay. June 2010, page 6, and we might get page 7. Uh, let's see, question, uh, what is this, 24. A longitudinal wave moves to the right through a uniform medium as shown below. Positions of the particles on the wave. All right, well, let's see. Uh, these are the compression regions, high energy, so these would correspond to uh, crests, troughs, crests, troughs, and so on. Which diagram best represents the motion of the particles at position C as the wave moves to the right? Well, uh, it's not up and down, it's back and forth, so that's going to be choice four. The wavelength of this wave is equal to the distance between points. Well, we want identical points on subsequent waves. Gosh, I'm going to say uh, A and C. These uh, uh, B and D are kind of off from each other. E is kind of in the middle of this um, compression region. I'm saying A and C. Let's see, A and C. There's an answer. And the energy of this wave is related to its amplitude. That's true of all waves. And the energy is related to amplitude until you get to quantum mechanics and then uh, it's frequency. <laughs> Go figure. Ooh, it's brighter. A ray of monochromatic yellow light of this frequency passing from water through flint glass into medium X as shown below. So it's going from water into flint glass. And let me check with my ruler. That thing ain't bending. It goes into there, it's going straight. So here's how you solve the problem. The absolute index or a fraction of medium X, and it's going to be the same as flint glass. So let's look that up. And uh, flint glass, 1.66 equal to 1.66. Uh, less than water, can't be that. Greater than water, less than that, it's not going to be that. It's 1.66. Why are we doing the others? 28. A light ray traveling in air enters a second medium and its speed slows down. So the index refraction is greater than air. Uh, what's the absolute index refraction of the second medium? Well, it's got to be more than one, and it's got to be uh, more than one. The formula for the uh, index for a fraction, n is equal to c over v, and uh, uh, yeah, n equals c over v. Uh, so it's the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the speed of light in this material, 1.7 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Meters per second cancel out. So does times 10 to the 8. So it's 3 divided by 1.7. And uh, it's 1.75. 29. Playing a certain musical note on a trumpet play, causes the springs in the bottom of a nearby snare drum to vibrate. That's why snare drums, actually, there's little snares on them, uh, there's a little release mechanism. So you're, there's a set of springs underneath them. And you release that, and they don't make contact. It's also so it doesn't have to be a snare drum. But if you leave it connected, it will uh, resonate, uh, which is what they're talking about here, resonance. 29, resonance. 30, in a vacuum, all electromagnetic waves have the same, they've got the same speed. Certainly not phase. Uh, certainly not frequency or wavelength. So it's got to be speed. 31, a particle that is composed of two up quarks and a down quark. I feel like I'm supposed to remember this. But I can look it up. I do remember it, incidentally. Uh, positive two-thirds, positive two-thirds, minus a third. So that's uh, four-thirds minus a third, so that's three-thirds or one. It would have a charge of one. And the particle that has a charge of one is the proton. Two ups and a down. Neutron is two downs and an up. A helium atom contains two protons, two electrons, and two neutrons. In the helium atom, the strong force is a fundamental interaction between the, well, the electrons would be, um, 
electricity. Electrons and protons would be um, electricity. Electrons and neutrons don't have an interaction. It's uh, subatomic forces that hold the thing together, the strong force. Otherwise, uh, we'd have problems. 33. What total mass must be converted into energy to produce a gamma photon with an energy? So we don't care about any of this stuff. We just know that mass is converted into this much energy. So we know energy, we know mass, and we know Einstein said that E equals mc squared. So what total mass? We're solving for mass. So E divided by c squared gives us the mass. So that's 1.03 times 10 to the negative 13 joules divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. Don't forget to square it. And, and that's meters per second squared. Um, get your calculator out. And I'm coming up with uh, 1.14 times 10 to the negative 30. Question 34. Compared to the mass in charge of a proton, the antiproton would have the same mass and opposite charge. That's why it's an antiproton, because it's opposite. Everybody knows that. Question 35. If viewed from Earth, the light from a star has a lower frequency than the light emitted by the star. So you're looking at a star, and it's got a lower frequency, and that's Doppler effect. The light comes off, but if the star is moving away from the Earth, then we would see a lower frequency as it moves away from us. So it's moving away from the Earth. It's called redshift. And uh, we interpret that to mean that uh, all stars are moving away from the Earth. Or that energy is eaten up by space so that it comes to us at a lower energy. But that's just science fiction. Or is it?